Hallelujah! Our God is a good God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in His majestic presence. Amen. Let me welcome two or three people sitting next to you. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. For those watching online on Facebook and on Instagram, we want to welcome you tonight to tonight's Bible study. Hallelujah. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. So does the man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Praise the Lord. And we believe tonight as we begin to share the word of God together, we will sharpen each other. Iron will sharpen iron. Because if the, if, if, if the head be blunt, what will happen? You, much strength will be needed. So we need our head to be what? Sharp. So that we can have a straight court. Amen. Praise the Lord. So tonight we are going to be studying the Bible again. And I want it to be interactive. There will be room for questions. And I really want you to ask questions. Amen. For those online at home, you might also want to ask questions. Alright. Uh, somebody will be helping us to check if there are questions online. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Pastor Pastor, you help us to do that if there's any question online. During the course of the question and answer, please, let's see so we can uh, see if we can answer. We're still discussing the topic for the month, Revelation of Jesus Christ and the end times. Amen. And I started a series called it Understanding the Times. How many of you have been enjoying it so far? It's been informative for you. It's been life transforming. It's been life changing. It's not scaring you, but it's giving you hope. If you are in that category, come and shout, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, so we'll be going, taking it a little bit deeper today. And um, a lot of information will be shared. Praise the Lord. Some of it you, don't, you probably don't know about it before. And some of it you, you heard it, but you didn't understand. But it's important for us as children of God to understand the times. He said, and the children of Issachar, who had what? understanding of what the times what happened their brethren were at what at their command so you want to be above everybody you want to lead in this end time above the head above the normal people you need understanding of what is what happening around you so that when everybody's looking confused you're not confused when everybody's afraid you're not afraid when everybody is jumping up and down, hey, what is happening? What is happening? You're just calm. When men are cast down, you shall say what? There's lifting. Praise the Lord. Why? Because you have an understanding of the time. You know what's up. Come on, tell me, I know what's up. I know what's happening. I know what time it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know what time it is. Praise the Lord. Because I know it's already going to be dark, so I won't be. I won't be. I won't, I won't be surprised when the when the when everything start getting dark. It will be a surprise to me when during around two p.m. everywhere just becomes suddenly dark. That will be a surprise, right? But because I have the time, I know when it's going to be dark. Amen. I know, so nothing catches me by what surprise, and that's what Paul was telling us in the Book of First Thessalonians that you are not in the dark, brethren. That this day should come up unto you like a thief in the night. Because you understand the signs. And I, like I said to you and I explained to you, when you begin to see the sign, begin to see this, begin to see that. You know, I related it to the movie. When you go to the movie and you sit in the movie theater and you see they're, they're playing some advert that you don't know, you know, yes, the movie is not yet started. And when you see, you begin to see some signs that the movie is about to start. One of the signs you see that they stop showing the adverts. Isn't it? And you see something that begins to count. Right? Ten, nine, eight. So at that point in time, they switch off the light. You are not surprised when they switch off the light because you know what? The movie is about to start. Amen. If you go back to the scripture that we were reading, Matthew chapter 24. It's our main scripture, Matthew 24. If you're there, shout amen. Matthew 24, verse 1. The children, the, the disciples came and they asked Jesus questions. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him 
to show him the buildings of the temple, the temple of Jesus. We're going to be talking more about the temple today. Today's Bible study is centered on the sign of Israel. You know, I told you there are three indicators. What is happening where? What is happening where? In the world. What is happening in the church or to the church. And what is happening to Israel. Those are the three indicators that God gave us in the scripture to help us to know the time or the end of times. So here they asked Jesus. In verse 2, and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all those things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. What is he talking about? What was he talking about? The temple. They showed him the beautiful temple. That's a temple that was built after it was first of all destroyed. You know Solomon built the temple and it was destroyed by the Babylonian Empire. Okay? And they built it again. Remember the story of the Neymar? Neymar and Nicole, they built the temple again and now the temple was so beautiful because in the time of the Roman Empire, when Roman, in the time of Jesus was the time of the Roman Empire, they beautified the temple again and they are showing him how beautiful the stones of the temple were. Very colorful. And Jesus told them here, <laughs> this temple you have seen, there shall not be one stone left on another. Praise the Lord. And that is to say, the temple in Israel is a sign. What happens to the temple, what happens in the temple, what happens with the temple is one of the signs of the end of the age. Praise the Lord. And Jesus answered, and, in verse 3, and, and as I sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of, of what? The world. And I told you the word world there is what is the word age. What shall be the end of this age? And if you can remember, if you can put on my, um, my graphic, my very unprofessional graphic design, people in the media, can you hear me? Just put on my graphic to show you those dispensations again. Remember, we are in what age are we now? We are in the what? The church age. Praise the Lord. We are in the church age. Okay, and that is the, 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 if you want to talk about in dispensation, you call it dispensation of what? Of grace. And that started when? On the day of what? Pentecost. Started on the day of Pentecost up till now. So they were asking him, what shall be the sign of the end of this age? And Jesus told them in verse 4, said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name and blah, blah. You know, we read that and we talk about the deception. We have gone all through that. But what I want to say here quickly before I jump is that they ask him, What shall be the sign? When shall these things be? Praise the Lord. Now, if you look at the answer he gave to them in verse 36. Verse 36. Praise God. Verse 36. What does it say? But of that day and hour knoweth what no man. Not the angels of heaven, but who? My father only. So they ask him, What shall be the time? When shall these things be? That's the first question, when? But now answering them when, he could have come to verse and tell them nobody knows when. But because they also asked for what shall be the signs of thy coming, of the end of age. So he could not tell them when, but he was able to tell them the things that they would see that would help them to know that it is near. And that is what we've been looking at in the beginning. What shall be the signs of your coming? We talk about the deception. We talk about deception in the world, deception in the church. Wars and rumors of war. Go back to your note or go back and watch it. We stopped on Sunday 
at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Praise the Lord. That was where we stopped on Sunday. And I explained how the gospel shall be preached to all the world. And we say that is happening now. True or false? True or false? The gospel is being spread through technological means to all the world. So hardly will you find anybody that can say categorically that I've never heard about Jesus. Amen. Either you want or you don't want on your phone. It comes on your phone. You open your email, you sit on your email. You go to social media, somebody's preaching about Jesus. And I give you a lot of statistics. Now it takes us to verse 15, which is the crunchy part. And when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place, who so read it, let him understand. This is a very, very important scripture. One of the signs that Jesus was giving, he said, when you will see the abomination of desolation that was spoken of by Daniel. Daniel prophesied that the temple, there will be a desecration of the temple in the last days. Praise the Lord. As of today, in Israel, there's no temple. Praise the Lord. As at the time that Daniel wrote, the temple has been destroyed. I want you to follow me. If you're following me online, follow me. When this was written, let's go to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. When you therefore, and it shall confirm the covenant with Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, yes. And it shall confirm the covenant with many of one week. And in the midst of the week, it shall cause the sacrifice and the abolition to cease. Okay? And for thee, go ahead, go to the next verse. Move on. Or is that the last verse? Daniel chapter 9. We're going to read Daniel chapter 9. We're going to read Daniel chapter 11. I'm going to take this slowly so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Right. And he shall confirm the covenant with many of, for one week. And in the midst of one week, he shall cause the sacrifice of the abolition, of the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now I will explain this. Very clearly. But before I explain, go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Verse 31. Daniel 11 verse 31. And Hams shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place abomination that makes desolate. This is talking about polluting the temple of God. It's talking about somebody. It's talking about the... Daniel here was prophesying about the Antichrist polluting the temple of God. Which is a major sign that the end is about to come. I'm coming. Daniel chapter 12. And I will explain this. I will explain those three scriptures for you. Daniel chapter 12 verse 11. And from that time, that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. One thousand two hundred and ninety days from the time of the abomination of the temple, 
and make and when, from the time when an image will be set up in the temple by the Antichrist, there shall be 1,290 days. 1,290 days, I want you to write it down. 1,290 days divided by 360. How many days in a year? 365 days in a year. If you divide it, it gives you three and a half years. Three and a half years. Now I will explain. Now Daniel was prophesying. If you go back to Daniel chapter 9, this was an answer to Daniel's question to God about what is going to happen at the end of this. And Daniel, God told Daniel that one of the signs you will see that we are nearing the end is that the temple in Jerusalem will be what? Will be desecrated. Now, for the temple to be desecrated, that means there must be a temple. Can you follow me? Desecration means the temple will be polluted by somebody. If you read Daniel, he talked about a man who called himself the anointed, the antichrist, will come and he will desecrate, he will pollute the temple. And that happens, that is talking about the seven years of tribulation. In the seven years of tribulation, what will happen is that the antichrist will appear. But remember that before the antichrist begins to reign, there will have been rapture. So when the antichrist come, it comes on the platform of peace. And he will preach peace to the world. He will make Israel to enter into a peace accord. He will make nations to be at peace with Israel. Praise the Lord. You know, Israel is in the midst of enemies. The Antichrist will be like a world ruler that is preaching peace. He will not come with war. Otherwise, you will reject him. But he will preach peace and he will, he will broker peace with Israel and many nations. One world, world, one nation, world, ruled by one person. You might be wondering how that will be. One of the agenda of the United Nations is to make everybody one so that we can have one world. And that was what was being promoted when United Nations came together. And what that means that what you see in United Nations, that everybody is coming together, everybody is so, so, surrendering their sovereignty. No borders. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a EU court. They have a common legislation, a common market, a common economy. That is what it will be like when the Antichrist comes. So, I want you to follow me closely. I'm, going to, I'm saying it like a story so that you can understand. So, the Antichrist will come into a world that... A lot of things will have happened. The judgment will have happened such that countries will willingly surrender. Look, you are our president. You are our world leader. Everybody will make him their world leader. So he become the leader, the world ruler, the ruler of the whole world. And he will broker priest for Israel. In the first half of the seven years. Praise the Lord. But in the middle of that seven years, in the first half of that seven years, or before, the temple will be built again in Jerusalem. And like I said to you earlier, as of today, there's no temple in Jerusalem. And that was why when Donald Trump in 2018 recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, Everybody was afraid. Is he the Antichrist? If you notice in the last few months, a lot of the enemies of Israel has been entering into peace accord with Israel. Have you heard about that? Saudi Arabia. Qatar. Eh? So, eh? Yes. They have entered into peace accord with Israel. And that is why a lot of evangelicals begin to feel that <laughs> eh, it's beginning to happen. And that's why you have all this noise about Donald Trump. We don't know where it will end. Well, let us watch and see. Now, what am I saying? 
Today, there is no temple in Israel. Daniel, when Daniel was prophesying this prophecy, the temple had been destroyed. Daniel was in Babylon. The children of Israel, they have been scattered everywhere. Israel as a nation began to scatter after Solomon. When Asha became king, they were first divided to north and south. You have the northern part of Israel, you have the southern part of Israel, which is Judah and Benjamin. The rest were Naphtali and all the other ones. But as they continued to progress, they were, they were being given to the hand of the enemy and they scattered everywhere. So in the time of Jesus Christ, Israel was not a nation. They were under the Roman Empire. They were initially under the, under the Babylonian Empire, under the Persian Empire, and they were under the Roman Empire. So Israel was a scattered nation. They didn't have a nation. Praise the Lord. But Daniel here was saying that at the end of time, there will be Jerusalem. The city of the living God. And in that Jerusalem, there will be a temple. And somebody will desecrate the temple. For there to be a Jerusalem, there must, there must first of all be an Israel nation. And one of the signs of the end of days is that God will gather his people, Israel, back to it from a nation. Let's look at that in the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2. Am I making sense? Are you getting me? All right. Joel, chapter 2. You might need to share the story with somebody someday. Are you in Joel, chapter 2? Remember that it's in Joel, chapter 2, verse 27, that Joel prophesied about the last day, that in the last days I will pour out of what? My spirit upon all flesh. Their sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's in 20, verse 27. And in verse 20, they said, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall dream dreams, and your young and your whole people shall see, um, old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall what, see visions. Okay? And also upon my servant will I pour, pour upon the handmaid in those days, I will pour out of my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on the head. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into what? Darkness. And the moon into what? Blood. Can you remember the, the blood moon? It happened when? Some few years ago. <laughs> the great and the terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. From Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be what? Deliverance. On Mount Zion and in where? Jerusalem. So pointing to Israel again. That the final deliverance will happen where? In Israel. It started in Israel. It will end in Israel. That's why Israel is important in God's agenda for the end time. And that is why we as Christians, we must stand with Israel. Have you had people saying, let us pray for Israel. Let us stand with Israel. People carry the flag of Israel. We are commanded as children of God to pray for Israel because it, 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 they have an everlasting covenant with God. In Genesis chapter, 20, chapter 17, God promised Abraham, I will make an everlasting covenant with you and your descendants. So if God has promised him an everlasting covenant, it is everlasting, it cannot be broken. Praise the Lord. I know there's a school of thought that says, oh, we as Christian, we have replaced the Israelite. We are the new Israelite. No, we have not replaced. We have just been engrafted into the commonwealth of Israel by faith. We are children of Abraham by faith. They are still children of Abraham by what? By birth. And those are the elect. Those are the people, that God's own people. And God said, he said to, um, Paul was writing Romans, he said, has God forsaken his people Israel? He said, God forbid. Romans chapter 11 verse 1. Has God forsaken his people Israel? He said, God forbid. That is where Israel shall be saved. So, now, flip to chapter 3 and see what is written here. Remember, it's writing about in the last days. Now in chapter 3, for behold, in those days and in that time when I will bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem 
I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. In the last days is when God is saying that he will gather Israel and they will come back and become a nation. And that happened in May 14, 1948. May 14, 1948. Israel came back as a nation after being scattered for over 2,000 years. It's one of the greatest miracles that has been recorded in the history of mankind. That a people, a race that has been scattered all over the world. God brought them back to where he has promised them. Remember, he promised Abraham that this land, I will, you will inherit this land. I will give you this land. Listen to me. Whatever God has promised you, time cannot change it. Time cannot change it. Look at that. Genesis 17. Quickly. I want us to read those scriptures so that you can put them down as references. Genesis 17. Verse 7. Listen. I will establish my covenant between thee, between, between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land. Which land is that? The land of Canaan, the land of Israel. Wherein thou art a stranger and all the land of Canaan. And look at it. Abraham was not, Abraham was in Canaan as a stranger at that time. Remember. Remember. He was in Canaan as a stranger. Because God told him in Genesis chapter 10, move out of your father's house and go to a land where I will show thee. And God settled him in this land. And God told him, I will, this land shall be your land, the land of your generations and generations to come. And you know what happened? After Jacob, after Isaac, after Jacob, after Joseph, what happened? All of them left Canaan and went to where? And went to where? Egypt. They left the land that God has promised them. They went to Egypt. And they stayed in Egypt. They were in bondage for how many years? When you live where God has put you, it's bondage. They spent 400 years in bondage. But after that, they still what? They came back to that land. God brought them out of bondage with a mighty strong hand and he brought them back to that land in Canaan. And they stayed in that land. And the story went on. They had prophets and they had kings. They had King Saul. They had King David. Okay? In the time of David, towards the reign of David, it was divided into northern and southern Judah. Solomon came. And after then, it began to what? Scatter again. And they were scattered. As a matter of fact, when, when the Babylonian came, they demolished the temple. And once they demolished the temple, you have demolished Israel. They scattered them everywhere. And everybody scattered. So the land, the nation of Israel no longer exists. But God promised them, according to Joel, that in the last days, one of the signs of the latter days is that Israel will come back as a nation. So when Israel came back as a nation in 1948, it was the greatest miracle in the whole world. And everybody knew then that we are we have entered the last of the last days. May 14, 1948. We started, we got to the escatos of the escatos. You know when I was describing escatos for you? That is used to describe the last of the last. I mean the last day of the week. The last month of the year. So the last of the last, that is where we have from that 1914 when Israel came back as a nation. Isaiah prophesied it. Prophesied it. Look at Isaiah chapter 60. Quickly, Isaiah chapter 60. I read it in one beautiful version here and I so love it and I'm going to, just going to read it to you. Isaiah chapter 60. Praise God. Am I making sense tonight? Are you gaining anything tonight? 
it's important for you to know. If you don't know, then your brethren cannot be at your command. Isaiah chapter what? 60. Fantastic. So, in Isaiah chapter 60, you will see where, look at verse 4. Look at what verse 4. What does it say? Lift up your eyes, round about, and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be not at thy side. He's talking about Jerusalem. When he said, arise, shine, he was actually talking about Jerusalem. Your sons shall come from afar, your daughters shall come from afar. And your, look at verse 8. When I saw verse 8, I just laughed. Verse 8, what does it say? Who are these flying as cloud and as the doves to their windows? So what Isaiah saw, let me read it here for you to understand. In this, in this New Living Translation, it says, And what do I see flying like clouds to Israel? Like doves in their, to their nest. They are ships from the ends of the earth, from lands that trust in me, led by the great ship of Tarshish. They are bringing the people of Israel home from far away. Carrying their silver and their gold, they will honor the Lord, of, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has filled you with splendor. Who are these flying like clouds? I said what Isaiah saw, he actually saw a aeroplane. But because he didn't have any word to describe aeroplane then, he said, who are these flying like clouds? In one version, he said, who are, the, who are these flying like ships in the air? Bringing your children back home. Praise the Lord. In verse 12, verse 12 it says, for the nations that refuse to serve you will be destroyed. The nations that refuse to serve you, he's talking about Israel, will be destroyed. The glory of Lebanon will be yours. The forest of Cyprus, fair, pine, the beauty of the sanctuary, the temple, your temple shall be glorious. Today there's war between Israel and Palestine. They are fighting for what? Gaza Strip. Do you know that Gaza Strip are some of the land that God gave to Israel? So one of the reasons for the war now with Palestinians is because of land. That God has given them as an inheritance. So when they came back in 1948, they possessed the land again. So one of the peace broker, or the, 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 one of the things that they will need to use to break um, broker peace in the Middle East is for Israel to concede those land. That's what you mean by a two-state nation. That the two nations will coexist. But for them to coexist, Israel will need to give someone like Gaza Strip and some of those and will, will, will concede it to Israel. But that is against the covenant. Praise the Lord. Now they have possessed the land. So where, what I'm driving at is that then, so now as at then, in the time of how time flies. As at the time of Daniel, no temple. Now, in the time of Jesus, the temple was built. So, from 1948, we began to count down to the last of the last of the last of the last days. And in that last day, one of the signs that will show, signify his coming, I want you to know that his second coming is different from rapture. The second coming of Jesus is different from what? From rapture. During rapture, on Sunday, I will talk about rapture. I'm going to talk about the good news about rapture. This, during rapture, Jesus will come like a, will come in the cloud. And we that are still alive, we what? We'll catch up with him in the clouds. Right? And they that are dead in Christ will rise first. Then we that we are still alive will get caught up with him in the, in the, in the cloud. And forever we'll be with the Lord in the air. But in the second coming, after the seven years of tribulation, that's when Jesus will come and he will descend again on Mount Olives. 
And that's where we are going to have the battle of Armageddon. Now, the seven years of tribulation is what Daniel is describing here. That in the first half of the seven year, there will be peace treaty. There will be peace covenant between Israel and the Antichrist and the whole world. But in the middle of that peace treaty, in the middle of that seven years, the Antichrist will break the covenant. He will break the peace treaty that he signed with Israel and he will go to the temple in Israel. Meaning that as a then, there will have been a temple world built in Israel. You remember that as well? I said people were afraid when Trump in 1918 recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and moved the American embassy to where Jerusalem and many other nations began to follow to relocate their embassy to Israel, making sure that Jerusalem to, to Jerusalem rather to Jerusalem to be rebuilt and Jerusalem will become the center because that is the center of attraction. Everything will end on Mount Olives. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So in the middle of that seven years, the Antichrist goes into the temple, he stops the sacrifice. And he will re erect in the temple an image and says everybody should begin to worship that image. That's desecration, which is abomination. So from that last seven years to the end, it will be greater, that's what the Bible called great tribulation. That's where you have the wrath of God and the onslaught. So at that time, Till the end, it will be another three and a half years before Jesus will eventually come. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Israel as a nation is one of the signs that God wants us to look at. What is happening to Israel. And that's why it's important for us as believers today to understand and look at what Israel, what is happening to Israel and stand with Israel because at the end of the day, Israel shall be saved. Israel shall be saved. I'll show you a scripture before I go, before I close. Romans chapter 11. Paul was writing about Israel. Romans chapter 11. Are you getting, are you getting anything tonight? I hope this is not sounding strange to you. It could be strange, but it's informative. And it's something that we need to know. We have to teach it. We don't teach it, we run away from it, but we have to find the time what, to teach it so that you can understand what is happening. So a lot of things that you are seeing happening, they are already prophesied in the scripture. So Paul was writing about the Israel here in Romans chapter 11. I said then, had God cast away his people God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of the Benjamin. Praise the Lord. In verse 26, verse 26, there's a lot to read in that scripture. You might just go home and just read it. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That shall come as a deliverer and turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sakes. Do you understand that? As concerning the gospel, you might look at them today that they are enemies. But as concerning the elect, they are God's children. They are God's chosen people. Verse 29 says what? Well, for the gift and the calling of God are without what? Repentance. Is it making sense? God has made an everlasting covenant with them. If God has made a covenant with you, he said, my covenant will I not break, nor offer the things that, what, that has gone out of my mouth. So when you look at the story of the children of Israel, you realize that when God promises, God stands by his promise. And if today, Bible said, they that are of faith are blessed with who? With faithful Abraham, that we have become Israelites by faith. 
By the reason of our faith, we have become Israelites. And that suffices to say that whatever God has promised you, time cannot change it. Come and say, whatever God has promised me, time cannot change it. God told them about this promise and for 2,000 years, look at it, all those nations, all those empires, that invaded Israel. Do you know those, those empires don't exist again? Do you know that? Where is the Babylonian Empire? Gone. The Persian Empire? Gone. The Greek Empire? Gone. The Roman Empire? Gone. But Israel is standing. There are many plans in the heart of men, but nevertheless, the counsel of God shall stand. What God has promised to you shall come to pass. Everything we are seeing now are the things that have been what? Written. Written. So why are you afraid? Why are you trembling? Why are you losing faith? It has been what? Written. When God has written it and he has promised it concerning you, take a chill pill. It will come to what? To pass. No matter what anybody does. It, was, it, it told them in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. For a little while I have scattered you. But now I'm what? Gathering you. Amen. And you know when, what they told the children of Israel? Anyone that calls you. Eh? And anyone that bless you, what? Should we pray for Israel? Or should we curse Israel? Any nation that dis- rise up against you, they shall be what? They destroyed. Should we curse Israel? Should we pray for Israel? So when you see nations say we are praying for Israel, they know what they are doing. And when you see Christians saying we are praying for Israel, we are standing with Israel, they know it because they are God's chosen people. God has not forsaken his people. God will never forsake you. I say God will never forsake you. He said, I will never forsake you. Come on, say God will never forsake me. Because you are in Christ Jesus, you have become Israel. God will never, never, never forsake you. He can never forsake you. He said, I have tattooed you in the palm of my hands. Your words are continually before me. Anyone that touches you, touches the apple of my eyes. That's what he told his children and that is what he's telling you. You're untouchable. Come on, say, I'm untouchable. Come on, say, I'm untouchable. I can never be forsaken. I can never be forsaken. God has not forsaken me. Therefore, I am not forsaken. If the children of Israel for 2,000 years, they were scattered everywhere. I'm sure they would have thought that. Which promise of gathering again? After 2,000 years. Generations, generations, generations. But they still came back. They still had their language. They still preserve their culture. It's a miracle. God will do a miracle in your life. Rise to your feet. This God will do a miracle in your life. As a matter of fact, you are a miracle. Come on, say, I am a miracle. Come on, say, I'm a miracle. Whatever God has promised me will surely come to pass. Lift up your hand to heaven and just bless the name of the Lord. I don't know how this message has come to you tonight. Just bless the name of the Lord. God is not a man that they should lie. In that is a son of man that he should change his mind. Whatever he has said to you, he will do it. You are not forsaken. I say you are not forsaken. I say you are not forsaken. In these latter days, you know, I said yesterday, he said, behold, I come out quickly. Is that not it? Behold, I come out quickly. And my reward is what? Is with me. Now, and I said yesterday that if Jesus is coming quickly, 
then whatever he has promised you, because it must come to pass, he will do it quickly before he comes quickly. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's going to come quickly. But he has promised you some things before he comes. So he will quickly do what he has promised you so that you don't delay him to come quickly. Whatever he has promised you, he's doing a quick work concerning it. I said the Lord is doing a quick work concerning you. I said the Lord is doing a quick work concerning you. Concerning your career is doing a quick work. Concerning your children is doing a quick work. Concerning your marriage is doing a quick work. Concerning your business is doing a quick work. It's doing a quick work. Come and say the Lord is doing a quick work. In the name of Jesus. If you read Isaiah 60 to the end, the last end in Isaiah 60, he said, a little one shall become what? A thousand. And a mighty one, a, a, little, a small one, a what? A strong nation. And he said what? High the Lord will hasten to perform it in this time. God is in a haste to bless you. God is in a haste to turn around your situation. God is in a haste to change your situation. God is in a haste to change your story so that you will not be the one that will delay him from coming quickly. He said, behold, I come quickly. And for me to come quickly, let me quickly do what concerns Wale quickly. Come on, say, God is doing a quick work concerning me. Say, God is doing a quick work concerning me. Lift up your hand to heaven and let us close tonight. Hallelujah. God is doing a quick work concerning me. Concerning me, God is doing a quick work. Call your name concerning Ayo, God is doing a quick work. Concerning Onome, God is doing a quick work. In the name of Jesus. Concerning Chioma, God is doing a quick work. Concerning Mary, God is doing a quick work. Concerning Emeka, God is doing a quick work. Concerning Tola de Lagoon, God is doing a quick work. God is doing a quick work. In the name of Jesus. I say God is doing a quick work. Hallelujah. Sorry, I might not be able to mention the name of everybody, but say God is doing a quick work concerning me. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him praise and glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, after hearing this kind of news, it's a very good time to get born again. So in case you're watching me here or you're watching me online and you're not born again, give your life to Jesus Christ. You can do it now, but then it will be too late. So before it's too late, surrender. So that you can become the Israel of God. The chosen of God. The elect of God. The people who have been joined into the commonwealth of Israel. Hallelujah. If there's anybody doing that online or here, just say this prayer with me. Say, Father, I come to you today and I surrender to you. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe for my sake you died and you rose on the third day. And I confess with my mouth, be my Lord be my master and be my savior now and forevermore in Jesus name amen God bless you if you have prayed that prayer sincerely come on celebrate Jesus you are born again you are now Israel you are Israel by faith come on celebrate Jesus amen it's time to give a offering and a tithe tonight whatever you have for to give to the Lord please bring it up and let's pray over our offering I have my envelope there. Can you just help me with my envelope? Lift up your envelope. I have it here. Thank you. Lift it up. If you're watching online, it's going to show on the screen right, right away how you're going to give. You can do a transfer, your tithe and your offering. We do it here not because they compel us to do it. We do it because we love God, because we are lovers of God. God loves us and we want to show him we also love him. What we are giving cannot buy his love, cannot be commensurate to his love, but we are demonstrating our love to him. Come and say, Lord, this is, this is my offering. I can say, Lord, this is my offering and my tithe. It's an expression of my love to you. Love for you. Love for the work of God. I do this not grudgingly, nor of necessity. I do it because I love you. Let it be unto you as a sweet smelling savour. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Don't turn him and say, Surely God's goodness is mercy, kindness, favor, signs, and wonders shall follow you 
all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever in Jesus name. Amen. See you at the top. God bless you.